Hi guys, what is going on and welcome back to Conqueror's Blade. So today I just wanted to do kind of a quick video just briefly covering each of the main class types uh, just to talk about kind of the key playstyles of each, how each one handles uh, just so if you're having some sort of difficulty in deciding what you want to play as maybe this will give you a few hints because you only get to try out three with your main character and obviously you might not know which one you want to pick and because I've been playing quite a few of the closed beaters now I've kind of tried out each and every one of them so uh, I could hopefully give you a bit of feedback on that. I did a video similar to this uh, sort of three or four months ago, one of the earlier closed beaters, but since I've been playing quite a bit more since then um, and a few things have changed as well, I thought it'd be kind of worth re-diving back into the topic, kind of having another look, seeing what we can find out. So we'll just start off with the male ones first. So if we click next, click through, we'll see the options that we have available uh, because there are male and female specific classes, so we'll cover both. So starting with um, some of the heavier weapons, so we'll look at the pole axe, Nadachi, and the glaive, because I'm going to loosely group all these together as the main damage dealing classes. These are all the sort of heavy weapon classes, um, and they can be broken down into two sort of subsections. Pole axe is the heavy armor, um, slowest but hardest hitting class. You know, it does the most damage with each hit and has the most defense in terms of its armor because it uses heavy armor but it's very slow, it's both slow in movement, it's slow in its attack and it's pretty immobile as kind of you'd expect so yeah, so you're kind of sacrificing mobility for damage then you've got um, Nodachi and Glaive which are pretty similar Glaive is, um, you're getting slightly more rich but sacrificing a little bit of damage but it's still a high damaging weapon um, and then Nodachi, probably the worst of the three is kind of slightly short of reach, but not particularly that much higher damage, but still a high damaging class, because that's what all three are. So if you're looking to be mainly a damage dealer, then one of those three classes is kind of what I'd pick. Personally, in the current state of the game, I'd rule out the Dachi, although, you know, if that's something that you're interested in from a sort of cosmetic point of view, then that's well worth trying. But it'd be either for me, Polax or Glaive. Personally, I prefer Glaive because you can still do a lot of damage, but you get that little bit of mobility as well. Kind of gives you some more tactical options. But the Polax is a pretty beasty weapon, nonetheless. Now, the other sort of longish range weapon is the Spear. So, it's kind of a strange one, the Spear. I've never been a particular fan of it. Um, as a sort of two-handed weapon on the ground, it's not that effective. It doesn't stand up compared to the Glaive or the Polak because it doesn't get that high damage potential. Um, but then nor do you get sort of extreme mobility that you get with some of the long swords, and you don't really get that many tactical options in terms of abilities and stuff on the ground. When it comes into its own is when you're on cavalry. If you can get on your horse, you get a very cool cavalry charge ability depending on how much stamina you have on your horses, how effective it is and how long it lasts, um, which allows you basically to, to sort of crouch with a lance and charge around the battlefield, stabbing everyone in your way, basically, which makes it pretty awesome when you're trying to take out large groups of archers and things like that, and particularly low armoured units. Uh, so it's excellent for that, but in other cases, I, I don't feel that the current, with its current state, it's really that powerful. I feel it lacks in a lot of way, and it doesn't really compare to, to say, like the Polaks or the Glaive, so... Probably for me, one we'll to give a miss, unless you're a real cavalry fan, in which case it does have a few sort of niche applications which make it kind of interesting. So after that, you've then got the two short arms, long sword and shield, and short, short sword and shield, a bit of a mouthful. Um, so how do these two play? Long sword is the uh, sort of more damaging, heavier armor version, and then you've got the more mobile, lighter armor version. For me, the short sword and shield is more of a dueling class doesn't really have the damage potential to, to, to easily wipe out large amounts of enemy AI units or um, you know to, to, to output that damage in the larger fights like the long sword or the pole axe or the glaive does so I feel it's but but when you get into the dueling situations it's very quick it's very mobile you get the shield which helps you to block lots of its abilities are focused around sort of that dueling mechanic so for one-on-one -on -one, it's pretty awesome um, but obviously those aren't always the situations you're going to be encountering on the battlefield. There's not always going to be a one-on-one -on -one hero hero fight. Although when you get them, it's good. For me, the better of the two uh, is the longsword. It is probably the epitome of the average class in the game. It, it, it's pretty much exactly middle of the road. Um, it's got good amounts of armor, heavy armor. It's got a reasonable amount of mobility. It's not super mobile, but it's not horrifically slow the bollocks either. Um, it's got lots of nice abilities, including a self-healing ability, a charge ability. Um, yeah, 
does have enough damage as well, really is the middle of the class road. If you're really not sure about which of the classes to take, you can't decide then, and you just want a middle of the road class, longsword and shield is probably the way to go. So for the male, that's it for the melee classes. So let's move on and take a look at uh, some of the ranged options you get available. So in effect in the game there are three ranged classes, bow, musket um, and short bow. So this is the long bow effectively here when it's just classed as the bow. Um, only, only female characters can use the short bow, so that's not covered here. Um, so the bow, probably for me one of my preferred ranged class. So the benefits of the bow is sort of medium damage output, medium rate of fire, pretty much unlimited range, which is the nicest thing. Um, you don't get any ranged markers like you do with the musket, but you can basically shoot at people on the other side of the map. So if you can once you get the hang of the ranging, which kind of takes a little while to get the hang of, but once you get good at it, you can output damage or start to pick at people who are standing in you know bad positions at quite a long way away. So it is quite, quite a lot of tactical options in that sense. Um, it also has things like an exploding arrow ability, which is kind of cool. Uh, a rapid shot ability. It can output quite a bit of damage in a reasonable short amount of time when you combine it with your abilities. And yeah, a pretty solid all-round class. Uh, the was kind of a case is, is this is the bow overpowered in this game. Um, at times it feels like it can be, but I think it's borderline, but I don't think it is. I think it's a very good, solid, all-round ranged class. But when you use this in conjunction with the some of the bow AI infantry, then it becomes really powerful because because unlike a melee class where you're charging forward and leaving your archers at the back, this one you're with your archers, you can manage them, you can change their position, you can look after them far better. I think that's kind of what makes this class really powerful. So then there's the musket. A bit of a strange one, the musket. Fairly hard to play for me. I find it, um, every time I try it, I find it really hard to get the damage because it's got quite a short range um, weapon. It's not uh, super quick to reload. Its damage potential is high. It gets some interesting abilities like things like grenades and stuff, which make it a really interesting class. And if you ever come up against a skilled musket player, you'll soon see why it's such a choice weapon for some people because damage output you can do in such a short period of time it's immense you know sometimes you can just get your ass absolutely handed to you by the musket players um so it has a lot of potential i personally just find it kind of hard to use um so yeah it's kind of the, the high damaging but short range class and, it, and it's actually physically range limited so it's not just about that it's inaccurate at range it's once you go outside of its maximum range it, it stops working you won't be able to damage anymore so and that's its limitation compared to the bow, I find. So you're always fighting much more on the front line. It's a slightly heavier armoured unit, though. Um, and a lot of its stun mechanics you can cause with the musket can make it hard for people to get up to you. So even being front line, if you're good with your shots and don't miss, then you can actually get away with quite a lot. So, yeah, interesting class. Hard for me to play. Probably very good once you get the hang of it. So let's hop back to screen or two and go into the female and look at a couple of female-specific um, classes. You also lose classes with the females. They can't have. Um, what can they have? They can't have the pole axe. What else are we missing? They can't have the longbow. They can't have the musket. But oh no, they can't have the musket. But they do gain two unique classes. So the short bow. That's an exceptionally short short bow. Um, so short bow. How does this work? Low damage, but extremely high rate of fire. It's like a machine gun. Um, it does have pretty long range potential but unlike the longbow it doesn't have any accuracy at range it, it, you're firing at, um, in an area it fires like through a circle whereas the longbow is to a point so it makes it pretty hard to be accurate in any sort of extreme distances um, but it's this rate of fire the fact that it hit it hits fires it fires it fires continuously and that's what makes it really quite a powerful class because you can often every time you're getting the hits you're getting the stuns as well you can really lock down enemy heroes and take them out pretty quickly if you want to. I find it's not so effective as the longbow at taking out enemy units, the AR units, because you can't really target the headshots quite the same. And even though you're getting that continuous rate of fire, the actual damage per hit is kind of a lot lower. But for me, the longbow sort of excels in that sort of situation. But interesting class around. Um, yeah, that's the short bow, I guess. <laughs> and finally, probably the most controversial class in the game, I would say, maybe compared with the longbow. Um, dual blades. So this is a dual wielding assassin class. Um, yeah, this is very hard to describe kind of how it works, but in effect it has certain unique abilities like invisibility and it can basically stranglehold like a choke on enemy heroes. It's a real 
assassin class. I guess that makes sense. You know, it is an assassin. That's its, that's its purpose. It's for taking out enemy heroes. And it's very hard for enemy heroes to fight against this because one, you're invisible. I mean, you're invisible. Unless you can, you get there's a very slight trace of them, but it's really hard to spot, particularly in a combat situation. Um, so that enables them to really get up or close to enemy heroes. And then once they start their combat moves on enemy heroes, particularly with their ultimate ability, they pretty well lock them down. Um, and definitely can get the kills pretty easily. This is, makes it particularly effective against enemy archers and stuff, particularly where they're quite stationary towards sort of behind the front line, putting in fire, not really paying attention. You can sneak up on them in visibility, get the kill, and enemy archers being quite lightly armoured go down very quickly. But the consequence to this is they're not particularly super effective against enemy infantry. They don't have that sort of damage potential. It's a very focused damage potential, not like a glaive where you can do great sweeping strikes and cause vast amounts of damage. It doesn't have that potential. Its effectiveness in terms of um, dealing with units is not so good. It's only a hero focused. And then they also have extremely light armor for a frontline unit. When it goes wrong, when you get caught out in the open, when the, the enemy unit of enemy archers starts shooting at you, when that pole axe turns up and starts trying to smack you in the face, you go down really fast because you've got no arm. You're sort of a bit of a glass cannon. So that's kind of the, the flip side. But there's a lot of controversy kind of around that invisibility element, as far as I understand it. So anyway, hopefully that given you a little bit of an overview of the main classes in the game and is kind of vaguely interesting. I can't believe I've been talking for 10 minutes already. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, do let me know what you think about these classes in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel for lots more Conqueror's Blade content and I shall see you guys all on the next video.